So, morning of the tourist trip, the two captains, Wardy and Jeff. Is that Wardy right? and Jeff's epic adventure. I'm, a, I'm only captain until Sam says otherwise. And then on Jeff's boat, he's got his brother and his uh, his nephew. So this is Dave and this is Harley. Harvey. Harvey. Harvey, sorry. I've been calling him Harley for two days now. <laughs> it's all good. Harvey, there you go. Learn every... um, so <laughs> Jeff and Dave actually grew up on Thursday Island. So they spent a lot of their life as kids on TI. So it's pretty exciting for them to go back. Yeah, yeah how do you feel about that? Oh, from a different uh, perspective, boating up there, it'll be great. So where we're at now, we're at Marpoon. So we're driven from Weeper to Marpoon and we're going to drop the boats in here because it saves us about 100 kilometres of coastline. And we're going to drive all day till we get to Prince of Wales Island, hopefully, if Endeavour Strait will let us cross in these little boats. But uh, that's the plan. So we've got a full day of steaming ahead of us to go all the way up the coast. And uh, hopefully this afternoon we can start fishing. Yeah. So that's the plan. We're leaving Marpoon now. Here we are at the boat ramp. And we've got a track all the way up the coast. It's going to take about five hours to get to Seisha and we're going to meet a mate of ours at Seisha and he's going to help us do a refuel, run our jerry cans into the service station at Seisha and refuel. We're lucky enough we have friends here in Marpoon so we had somewhere to stay last night and the rest of the time we'll be on Prince of Wales Island or POW Island they call it. It's just near Thursday Island and Horn Island. POW is the biggest island in Torres Straits and where we're going to camp is a place called Box Beach so we don't know if we're going to make that this afternoon though because we have to get across Endeavour Strait in these little boats and Endeavour Strait stands up like you wouldn't believe it's a really rough bit of water so these little boats if the wind gets up and we get wind against current we're not going to get across so we've got another plan we'll camp at a place called Ingenue and we'll try to get across Endeavour Strait early in the morning but from now we've got about four or five hours of driving north and see if we get to Seisha okay and then we'll work out how we're going to get across and demonstrate from there. which is good because we tried to beach the boat but there's a fair swell rolling into the beach so team and I had a bit of an emergency to try to get the boat off the beach before it got washed up high and dry but storms past I knew we were heading um, from here to Crab Island and rounding the top of the cape going past the garden hopefully we can get all the way into Seisha so we can do a ring pool and if we can get across the Devon Strait today that'll be great otherwise we've got a little hut we can stay in the need to do so Good, Pushing through patches of horrible weather, we arrived at the most northern town in Australia, Seisha. We had the option to stop at a hut just southwest of Seisha, but the weather had waves rolling into the beaches, so a safe anchorage just wasn't possible, so we had to push on to Prince of Wales Island. That meant a refueling Seisha and a trip across Endeavour Strait, a notoriously rough stretch of water separating Cape York from the archipelago, which is Torres Straits.
I've got to admit, I didn't think all us guys were going to make it here this afternoon, but uh, the once we got through the islands in Torres Straits, uh, the water's absolutely beautiful, but uh, Endeavour Strait stood up on us a fair bit. We got smash going across there. We got smash coming into the Jardine and around Crab Island, but uh, it was all worth it. We're on POW, and now we've just got to set up camp. And uh, perfect timing, because we've got about half an hour or 45 minutes before it's dark, and we'll have everything set up by then. So we made it. Set up camp and fish tomorrow. First day of fishing Torres Straits and we were faced with more mixed weather. Torrential monsoonal rain was followed by bright sunlight and moderate winds before another storm front would move through and drench us all once more. Day one of fishing proved to be frustrating for all of us, especially young Harvey, because as you can see here, he went to battle on a number of occasions only to come up empty more times than not. And Sam and I just worked a reef for a fair while and we got one small coral trout out of it, so Sam's back at camp. And what I'm doing now is I've got a little soft plastic and I found a, a rock ledge that runs for ages along here and it's where the rock, rocky reef meets the sand and it's only about two metres here where the sand is and then it goes straight up to about a metre jump of rock. So I'm going to work those edges because they're usually a really good spot for coral trout and we want, we're want we really keen to get some trout for dinner and I'm really keen to catch some trout as well, so we can get some trout. Absolutely no idea what this is, but I've been working the edge of this. It's like a coral edge, or it's more of a rock rock platform. It's got to be a big cod or something because it's just pulling so slow and so heavy. But, uh, all I've got is a couple of small coral trout, a couple of tuskies, not much at all. And then this thing came up. So, it's a good fish. It's got to be a big cod for sure. It might be a while. I'd love to see what this thing is. It's getting darker and darker and I, I need to, I've got a bit of a run to get back to camp and uh, I'm gonna have to snap it. I, uh, I start making some ground on it and it just decides to go whoop, 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 off again and we're now in 24 meters of water and it's just sitting on the bottom so sorry mate. going to get it up. Anyway, I just realised I've been fighting that fish for so long, uh, drifting around in these currents that just <laughs> just hammer through here, that uh, I'm a bit disorientated. I'm not really sure where I am now, so um, I'm going to throw another lure on another fish before I go back to camp, because uh, the plan was to snap that thing off and go back, but uh, well... I've got to keep fishing now, that's for sure. I haven't got any dinner yet anyway. I'm just need, losing another stick bait to the to the rocks and not a fish just here. That's the end of one of the most frustrating days of fish I've ever had in one of the most beautiful places. It belted down rain, we got hit by storms, we got no sleep last night. And the only big fish I hooked, I just had no chance of landing. So 
I'm going home without even any dinner. Hope tomorrow's better. So day uh, day three of our trip, and uh, the uh, weather hasn't let up at all, has it, baby? Hey, it's terrible. Rain, rain, rain. So uh, we had another very sleepless night, and uh, yeah, just drizzling rain. What can you do? So what's the plan, mate? You're going to watch Netflix all day. <laughs> yeah. I might go fishing. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to come fishing. Netflix? Nah. No Netflix. But we'll, uh, we'll put up with it, but um, yeah, the, everything's soaking wet. We've got no dry clothes to wear, and our beds are wet. Everything's wet, so even this roof above us, someone forgot to call for that one. <laughs> everything's I could have leaking. at least filled in the holes. I'm going to um, wander down and show um, a very keen... Harvey down there, who you might be able to see in the background, he's actually out there in the rain fishing. You won't ever stop him. And um, <coughs> I'll show him how I walk the dog on the um, the stick baits. So I was getting a lot of fish on that yesterday and lost about six stick baits to um, unstoppables in the reef. So I'll show Harvey how to lose a whole heap of stick baits too. Yeah. Is that right, Dad? That's all good, mate. You got plenty of money? Sponsored by Wardy's channel, so it's all good. <laughs> He's got plenty of money, so you can afford it. <laughs> Stick baits are just their thinking lures. So, and how traditionally they work is you do a sweep of the rod mm -hmm. and then pause them and they flutter down. So they do this big whoop, 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 yep. and then flutter. But if you let them sink over this reef, obviously you're going to get it caught up on the reef. Yep. So you can do a walk the dog technique. And walk the dog technique's done with surface lures mainly, so gar shaped surface lures. But you can do this, you'll watch this in the clear water in the shallows. If I just retrieve it and twitch the rod like that at the same time, see you how know that lure goes left, right, left, right, oh, yeah. left, right. It darts like that. It's hitting the bottom of the sand sometimes so it doesn't dart. So it's just um, slow turn of the handle and twitch the rod at the same time. The lure should go one way, left, right, left, right. Mm start around like that. So have a little throw then. Don't throw it out too far just so you can see it. Just on the off chance, I just threw a jig on because we're on the edge of a reef and we haven't been catching many trout. And uh, yeah, the little 40 gram butterfly jig with the charm. That's the best trout we've got in the trip so far and uh, I think I'll keep working the jig a bit more and see how we go. <laughs> it's closing time. The bar is almost empty. How'd you get that? It's me. The the water in the water and it came back up. No, no, <laughs> you got it by working a butterfly jig, slow pitching. Yeah, that's what Last I thought you were going to say. Has <laughs> come and gone. Buddy, time to go home. Sounds like a master plan. It's just the thought of you that's more than I can take. The night is warm and quiet. I hear the neon signs and the street lights buzz. The lovers, the one night stands, and the ones who buy it. All put to rest, one more day's fun. The weather continued to get worse as the days went on. I persisted with the wind and rain for two days of fishing, but by Thursday, 
Sam and I were just doing the tourist thing, having coffee on Thursday Island, buying souvenirs and just exploring this wonderful region. We did take the boat over to the other side of Murrelag Island where we were out of the wind and we discovered some wonderful scenery and some beautiful places to dive underneath the water. Pretty much uh, too windy to fish today, so we've walked, uh, driven the boats all the way around to the other side of the island. Uh, we've got a lot of weather and stuff around still, as you can see in the background. But we're going to try to find a waterfall that's in the island, so uh, we don't know how well we got told it's a fair hike. I don't know if there's a track or anything like that, so we see if we can find it. There was another waterfall that we couldn't find on the other side of the island, so hopefully we'll have a bit more luck with this one. Can you go and get them, please? We're going to go please. hiking for an hour or whatever, so we've got our good thongs, good hiking thongs. Uh, Japanese openings. <clears throat> and uh, Jeff reckons he knows uh, there's got to be a track. Is that what you said? Because we're on the wrong beach. It's not been. Thursday night was about all my little boat could take. The wind and rain was now accompanied by a swell that rolled into the beach at our camp. Jeff, Dave and Harvey were out at 11 o'clock at night pitching two anchors to their boat to stop it from slamming into mine and washing on shore. I rolled out of my swag at 4.30 to find the anchor road to have snapped during the night and the CJ was now on the beach being pounded by incoming swells. After another storm period and heavy rain prior to the dawn, we packed up camp and crossed a very angry Endeavour Strait. We refuelled again at Sasha and decided to just head home. There was nothing we could do about the weather. All up, Sam and I travelled over 600 kilometres and spent 33 hours motoring, and between Jeff's boat and mine, we burnt almost 600 litres of fuel. Jeff's boat did more case than my boat did as they went out to some of the wider reefs due to having a bigger, heavier boat. While none of us could ever say the trip was a success, it was still an adventure that we're never ever going to forget. <laughs>